the uh, seemingly increased conservatism is not uh, an increase in the influence of Wahhabism, for instance? Uh, I'm not sure about that. You know, I don't think that you know Wahhabism in Indonesia actually you know uh, uh, can can penetrate the society as a whole. You know, because if you look at uh, 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 Indonesia as a country, uh, as the, the largest you know Muslim country you know in the world, you know there are only two main uh, 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 strands of Islam. You know, if you like a school of thought. You know, one is of course the Nahdlatul Ulama, and then the other one is the, the Muhammadiyah. And then you know, these two organizations share a very uh, important uh, similar characteristic which is actually you know a, a, a tolerance and also open you know to uh, uh, differences uh, even more so you know within the Naratul Ulama you know because of the uh, uh, history of, of, of Naratul Ulama and then the nature of uh, uh, the coming of Islam into the country and so on where Islam you know actually can blend you know nicely uh, and very well together with the local cultures you know, and so on even Muhammadiyah since 2004 and five you know, already even, you know, launched the program, what we call as the uh, cultural dawa, you know, which actually take into account, the, you know, the, the, the local context, the local situation, you know, within which, you know, all these, you know, uh, teaching of Islam, you know, should be implemented. So, it, you know, in that context, I don't, I, I don't see that it's easy for Wahhabism actually to penetrate well-established bodies of, you know, religious understanding in, 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 in both Muhammadiyah and also in, 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 in the Natur Ulama. But my worry is basically, you know, there is one vulnerable sector of society that can actually be infiltrated, which is universities. Mm. You know, where actually, you know, students at the age of 19, you know, to 20, 22, mm -hmm. actually still in the search of some kind of, you know, mm. identity. That's actually now become, you know, some kind of theater for competition, you know, uh, for ideas, you know, among, you know, various groups, you know, within the, you know, the, the Muslim, Muslim community. We also face that challenge, you know, in our universities in, 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 in such as in Malang, you know, and so on, where, you know, the students actually, you know, become subject to very intense, you know, competitions among these uh, Islamic groups. And, and how do you deal with that? Uh, of course, you know, we have to uh, 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 revitalize, you know, the uh, Muhammadiyah youth, you know, movement, and then, you know, try actually uh, uh, to, to, to appeal to all the students, you know, that, you know, the main actually functions of the student actually to study, but at the same time, you know, to interact with the society. And the uh, so-called traditional student associations, uh, like Muhammadiyah uh, Students uh, uh, Association or the HME, the Islamic Student Association, and so on, you know, should you know be you know the main vehicles, you know, for the interaction between the student and, and the society, you know, because these are the groups that represent the mainstream, you know, of the Indonesia's Muslim. So here, you know, I think it is also important to uh, uh, emphasize that uh, what we call as a, a so-called you know moderate you know, forces in Indonesia is actually, we prefer the term, you know, mainstream, which is actually, you know, represented by both the NU and, and Muhammadiyah. But of course, uh, uh, there are also those groups, you know, who see that, you know, they are no longer represented by these two mainstreams. So this is actually the challenge for both NU and also the Muhammadiyah, you know, themselves, you know, to address because these people or these forces in you know, the margins need to be actually brought, you know, into the mainstream uh, activities and mainstream discourse as well. Historically, um, Islam-based political parties have not done well in elections. Uh, will the National Mandate Party, or PAN, the party affiliated with Muhammadiyah, have a special strategy for the upcoming 2009 general elections? Uh, I don't think so, because you know uh, now uh, the, the, the official line you know, of Muhammadiyah is basically to allow its members you know, to vote to any party. You know, in fact, you know, some of our uh, leading members actually have been actively involved you know, in helping the uh, Megawati led, you know, uh, PDIP uh, to establish the so-called, you know, the, 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 the Muslim wings, you know, the, the, the vital Muslim that they have. And also many of our members actually are members of the parliaments from Golkar. So uh, the, 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 the policy, you know, is basically, you know, to uh, keep, uh, you know, a, a same uh, distance uh, or closeness. That's the way, you know, uh, we, we put it, you know, with all the parties. So not only with, you know, with PAN. So that historical past is no longer there. So it's, there's... Uh a separation between church and political well, parties. Been, you know, it's always been the case. You know, especially within the 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 the, the, the Indonesian community, uh, we might recall the fact that you know when Pak Amin Rais, you know, the former chairman of Muhammadiyah, wanted to run as president, he realized that you know if he runs uh, you know on, on the basis of Muhammadiyah or Pan alone, then you know he would never actually win. So that's why you know he created that national mandate party. You know, which actually much you know broader and and also a, a plural 
a plural political party. It's not based on, you know, on, on, on Islam. On religion. You know, because in Indonesia, there is this always, you know, very clear, you know, uh, uh, separations in the mind of the voters and the people that politics, you know, and religion should be kept, you know, separate, even though the religious, you know, uh, moral values should always inform, you know, political behavior. So more as a political ethics that might be derived, you know, from, you know, from, from Islam. But once, you know, say, uh, clerics, you know, join, you know, politics, then usually, you know, he would lose, you know, the, 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 the audience. You know, and then there are many cases like that, you know, who this, you know, very famous cleric, you know, who could actually draw, you know, hundreds of thousands, you know, of people whenever he delivered a sermon. Once he joined a political party, then, you know, the number of followers reduced to hundreds. So that's a very clear, you know, indication. Not to mention that, you know, the Islamic-based political parties, votes, even combined together, never exceeded, you know, 30 to 35 percent, even, you know, from 1955. Amazing, isn't it? That's very interesting. <laughs> Where do you see Indonesia going in the next decade? Will it be able to deal with the challenges of globalization? I, I think uh, uh, we are a survivor. Eh? If you look at you know, uh, uh, the history of the nations from 1945, not to mention you know, the severe economic crisis that we uh, faced in 1997, a lot of people actually talk about you know, the disintegration of the country and then the balkanization of Indonesia you know, and so on. That you know, didn't happen. And in fact, you know, a lot of people actually was skeptical about the prospect of democratic consolidations uh, back in 2002, 2003, you know, when a lot of communal violence actually struck the nation. But nevertheless, you know, we managed, you know, to pass that most important uh, 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 test, you know, of, of democracy, the election in 2004. Not a single person actually died, you know, because of the uh, 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 election-related, you know, uh, political violence. Only four people died just simply because of the accidents, you know, at the time. So I'm sure that, you know, we... Uh, would you know uh, 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 be able to actually uh, face those challenges, but the problem is really can we actually move from this muddling through approach you know into a more coordinated, solid you know uh, 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 approach in dealing w with, with all those you know challenges. So that's until today. I think you know we still face you know the challenge of actually you know having a coordinated and integrated you know uh, 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 response in, t in form of policies you know to all the challenges that brought been brought about you know by by, by globalization. So through the muddling through, you know, we survived so far. But, you know, I think, you know, for the next 10 years, you know, we need to uh, uh, move beyond this muddling through. Because if, you know, say from now to the next 10 years, we still actually stuck with this muddling through approach, then, you know, we will have only muddling, you know, as approach. So I don't think that we can even through, you know, all these, you know, challenges. So that's, you know, I think uh, the problem that has been also created by the extreme uh, 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 plurality, you know, of the Indonesia's you know political system, you know, because Indonesia's system is basically one of the highest, you know, one, one, one of the most competitive, you know, political you know uh, system where actually many forces, many groups actually competing, you know, for uh, uh, differences, you know, uh, for different agendas. So that is make it, you know, uh, hard, you know, for any government, uh, I think, you know, to come up with, you know, an integrated, you know, approach in dealing with all the problems. So you're optimistic about the future of Indonesia? Cautiously optimistic, you know, because if you look at uh, the, the process of democratization, you know, for, you know so we live under authoritarian rule for what, 43 years. And then, you know, any uh, uh, theorist you know, or scholars would say that it would be difficult, you know, for such, you know, a society to actually move, you know, from authoritarian, you know, uh, uh, system into a democratic ones. Then, yet, you know, we managed to prove, you know, that, you know, we could do it. So now, you know, we actually ended the transition uh, uh, period and that we now begin the consolidation, you know, uh, process, you know, in, in democracy. That in itself, you know, shows that, you know, if we want to do it, you know, we can. On that note, Rizal, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Yes, thank you. <laughs>